Hello and welcome to yet another lecture on power generation and economics. Myself, Potitora, Assistant Professor of Dr. Shudhir Chandra Shudhi, the Engineering College, Electrical Engineering Department. So, till now we have learned that what is the power generation and economic, how economically we can approach towards our consumers, and what is the load curve, and what is the importance of the load curve, along with the brief idea about the thermal, hydro, and nuclear power generation and also the main fact is the choice of the sites and the different types of factor for those power generations. How easily we can approach towards those factors means how economically we can approach towards those factors so that and economically we can transmit power to our consumers depending upon the daily basis load demand. Now today we will discuss about the important factors that are related that are related with the economic power generation, those important factors. So, first we will discuss what is the importance of the load curve. First is that the load curve will give a brief idea about the amount of energy consumed in a day, a daily load curve. Also, a load curve will give an idea of different running hours of a power station. We also get a brief idea about the average load. Average load is the area under the daily load curve by 24 hours. From the load curve, we also find the maximum demand of the station that we have already seen. And the load curve also gives us an idea about the size and number of the generating units can be required. The load curve also helps to determine the operation schedule of the station. Means in that case, when all the units or less the units needs to run to meet the load demand is also be determined. So what is load duration curve? When the load elements of a load curve are arranged in the order of decreasing magnitude, the curve thus obtained is called the load duration curve. And here is an example of the load duration curve is given there. So this is the load curve and the load duration curve. So we will come to the important terms and the factors that is related with the economic power generation. So, first is the connected loads. So, what is connected loads? The connected loads is the sum of the continuous reading of all the equipments connected to the supply system. Means, say a power station supplies loads of 1000 consumers. Each consumer has a certain equipment installed in his premises. The sum of the continuous reading of all the equipments in the consumer's premises is the connected load of the consumer. For example, if a consumer has a connection of 500 watt lamps, means the total power is consumed by 5 into 100, 500. And a power point of 500 watts, so the total load that is connected is 5 into 100 by 500 is a 1000 watt by a consumer. And sum of the connected loads of all the consumer is the connected load to the power station. Now, the same factor is the maximum demand. It is the greatest demand of the load on the power station during a given period that we have already seen in the load curve. There is a different types of demands are there. Among that, which one is the maximum will give the maximum demand. So, what is the importance of the maximum demand? The knowledge of the maximum demand is very important as it is held in determining the, determine the installed capacity of the station. The station must be capable of meeting the maximum demand. <clears throat> so, what is the maximum demand will give a brief idea about the <coughs> installed capacity of the station. <coughs> so, station has the capability to meet the maximum demand. <coughs> so, what is demand factor? It is the ratio of the maximum demand on the power station to its connected load. So demand factor is the ratio of the maximum demand to the connected load. 
the value of demand factor is usually or less than less than one because it's the summation of all the connected loads and the maximum load so actually this load is the summation of all the loads among which which one is the maximum is known as the maximum load so ratio of the maximum load to the connected load is known as demand factor say the maximum demand of a power station is 80 megawatt and the connected load is 100 megawatt so the demand factor is 80 by 100 is the point eight. The knowledge of the demand factor is a vital in determining the capacity of the plant equipment. How much capacity of the plant equipment have it will determined by the demand factor. Having a value is usually less than one. The third one is the average load. The fourth one. Fourth one is the average load. So what is the average load? The average load occurring on the power station in a given period, day, month, or year, is known as an average load or average demand. The average of the all the loads occurring on the power station in a given period means a day or a month or year is known as the average load or the average demand. So, what is daily average load? The number of units, that is kilowatt hour, generated in a day by 24 hours. Means total unit it is generated kilowatt hour. We just divided it by the 24 means the hour, so it is the unit is kilowatt monthly average load number of kilowatt hour generated in a month by number of hours in a month. Yearly average load is the equal to the number of units that is kilowatt hour generated in a year divided by 8760 hours. This is nothing but 24 hours in a day and 365 hours in a year. So 24 multiplied by 365 equal to 8760. 24 hours in a day, total number of days in an hour, total number of days is 365. So total hour is given in that equation is a Seven six zero. Okay. So and there is a load factor. The ratio of average load to the maximum demand during a given period is known as load factor. That is, load factor is the ratio of average load by the maximum demand. If the plant is operation in T hours, then if I multiply it with the numerator and the denominator by T, so load factor is the average load into time T. By maximum demand into time t. That is unit generated in t hours by the maximum demand in t hours. The load factor may be daily load factor, monthly load factor, or annual load factor. If the time period considered is a day or month or year, depending upon that, the load factor can be a daily load factor, a monthly load factor, or an annual load factor. Load factor is always less than one because the average load is smaller than the maximum demand. This is known to us. The load factor plays a key role in determining the overall cost per unit generated. Higher the load factor of the power station, lesser the cost per unit generated. More the load factor, lesser is the cost per unit generated. More the load factor of the power station, lesser will be the cost per unit generated. Another is the diversity factor. It is the ratio of sum of individual maximum demand to the Maximum demand of the power station is known as diversity factor. That is, diversity factor is equal to sum of individual maximum demands divided by maximum demand of the power station. The power station supplies load to the various types of consumer whose maximum demands generally do not occur at the same time. Therefore, the maximum demand of the power station is always less than the sum of individual maximum demands of the consumers. Obviously, the diversity factor will be greater than the one. Because it's a sum of individual maximum demands by the maximum demand of the power station. The greater the diversity factor, the lesser is the cost of generation of the power. Greater the diversity factor, the less the cost of generation of the power. Another one is the plant capacity, plant capacity factor. It is a ratio of the actual energy produced to the maximum possible energy that could have been produced during a given period. That is, plant capacity factor equal to actual energy produced by the maximum energy could have been produced that could have been produced so average demand into time t by plant capacity factor into time t 
give us the average demand by plant capacity. This is known as plant capacity factor. The ratio of actual energy produced by the maximum energy that could have been produced. Thus, if we consider the period is one year, so annual plant capacity factor is annual kilowatt hour output by plant capacity into 8760. The plant capacity factor is an indication of the reserve capacity of the plant. A power station is so designed that it has some reserve capacity for meeting the increased load demand in future means you have to reserve some power. It means the reserve capacity of the plant will be there so that if there is any change or the high amount of load demand is there, we have to cope up with those changes. Means we have to make up those, we have to go, we have to give those excess load demands. Therefore, a installed capacity of the plant is always somewhere different than the maximum demand of the plant. So the reserve capacity is equal to plant capacity by maximum plant capacity minus maximum demand. It is interesting to note that the difference between the load factor and the plant capacity factor is an indication of reserve capacity. The difference between the load factor and the plant capacity factor is an indication of reserve capacity. If the maximum demand on the plant is equal to the plant capacity factor, then the load factor and the plant capacity factor will have the same value. The maximum demand on the plant is equal to the plant capacity factor. Then those the factors, the plant capacity factors and the load cap factors are equal. In such a case, the plant will have no reserve capacity. So we have understood the plant capacity factor and the reserve factor. So another is the plant use factor. It is a ratio of kilowatt or generated to the product of plant capacity and the number of hours for which the plant was in operation. That is, plant use factor is the ratio of station output in kilowatt hour divided by plant capacity into hours of use. Suppose a plant has an installed capacity of 20 megawatt and produce an annual output of 7.35 into 10 to the power 6 kilowatt hour and remains in operation for 2190 hours in a year. Then the plant's use factor equal to 7.35 into 10 to the power 6 that is the station output in kilowatt by the plant capacity is given 20 megawatt means 20 into 10 to the power 3 kilowatt into to total hours in use 2190, it is given 0 0.167 or 16.7 percent. Is that plant use factor? Another is the unit generated per annum. It is often required to find the kilowatt hour generated per annum for maximum demand and load factor. The procedure is as follows that the load factor is already known to us. It's the ratio of the average demand to the maximum demand. So average load is maximum demand into load factor. So unit generated per annum is the average load in kilowatt hour into hours in a year. So it is equal to average load can be replaced by maximum demand in kilowatt hour into load factor into 8760. This is the amount of unit generated per annum. So we have understood the different values of different factors that is related with the economical power generation. So all those are given the connected load demand, maximum demand, demand factor, average load, load factor, diversity factor, Coincidence factor. The coincidence factor is the reciprocal of the diversity factor. Whatever the diversity factor we have known, the coincidence factor is the reciprocal of the diversity factor. And there is the contribution factor. It is the contribution of a particular load in per unit of the individual demand to the group of maximum demand. Means a group of maximum demand is there. So, what is the contribution of that particular load in per unit of the individual demand? It is known as contribution factor. So plant capacity factor, plant use factor, and the plant utilization factor is already known to us. Just I have to recall those what we have learned. Just recalling our memory that what we have learned. Now is that the first one is the connected load. It is the sum of continuous rating of all the equipments connected to the supply system. This is the known as connected load. 
Second one is the maximum demand. It is the greatest demand of the load of the power station during a given period. Third one is the demand factor. It is the ratio of the maximum demand on the power station to its connected load. Fourth one is the average load. The average of loads occurring on the power station in a given period, day, month, day or month or year is known as the average load or the average demand. Again, it is the load factor. The ratio of average load to the maximum demand during a period is known as load factor. And there is the diversity factor. The ratio of the sum of the individual maximum demands to the maximum demand on the power station is known as diversity factor. The ratio of sum of the individual maximum demands to the maximum demand on the power station. Coincidence factor. The coincidence factor is the reciprocal of the diversity factor. Contribution factor is that it is the contribution of a particular load in part unit of the individual demand to the group of to the group of maximum demand. So the group maximum demand is known as contribution factor. So the plant capacity factor we have done now. It is the ratio of the actual energy produced to the maximum possible energy that could have been produced during a given period. And there is the plant use factor. It is the ratio of kilowatt hour generated to the produce to the product of the plant capacity and the number of hours for which the plant was operation. It is the ratio of kilowatt hour generated to the product of the plant capacity and the number of hours for, the, for which the plant was operation. So the plant utilization factor is the ratio of maximum load to the rated capacity. So this type of factors are generally known to us. We have discussed today about the different types of factors and why these factors are affected in case of the we will see that those factors will affect and in case of the economical power generation. So again I am repeating that our main motto is to generate the power in an economical way. So in order to find an economical power generation, we have to concentrate on those factors. Those factors are very much useful in case of the generation of the uh, economic power. And we have already uh, given an idea about the different factors how they are related and along with that why these factors will come into the play we'll see that uh, how this how this factor will come into the play when we will discuss about the economic generation of the power because one of the important factor is the average load so the average load is the important factor because all the loads we have so for a day, during a day, the amount of loads that we have to meet, we have to divide it by the 24 hours for a day. So we have to get an average load for that particular day from a load card can be found. And this is very much useful for the further prediction. Say for today, the average load demand is 20 kilowatts. So after one year, say we have get an average data of some previous years say 20, 25, 22, 28, 29. So we have created a range that if for that particular day, if I take the load demand within between 20 to 30, it can, it can help to meet that load demand for the future of that particular day. Same in case of the month, same in case of the year. So main motto is to create an average load pattern. Again, I have told that the reserve capacity of the plant is the important factor because there is a certain increase of the load demand can be obtained. So we have to meet that sudden increase of the load demand. In order to meet that sudden increase of the load demand, we have a plant reserve capacity. So those factors are very much useful in order to obtain that economic power generation. So. What we have done is that we have a brief idea about the load curve, the average demand, the different factors, and the 
number of units that is required or which unit we have to be run in order to meet our load demands depending upon the economical criteria. More economically we can generate the power, more economically we can transfer it to the consumer depending upon the their needs, depending upon the variation of the loads. So those factors that we have learned now, those factors are very much effective in order to find the load curve, load pattern in order to approach towards the economic load demand. Economic generation of the power and also econo and economically power can supply to the consumers. Those factors are very much essential. So those factors that we have learned today, those factors are very much effective in order to find the economic load generation. Thank you.